Good morning. Welcome to Truth Youth Fourth Sunday Jam. My name is Timmy Thomas, and I am so excited you have joined us. Quickly invite a friend or family member to connect with us for an infusion of hope during our uplifting and inspi- inspirational worship service just for youth grades 6 to 12. Get connected to the youth ministry. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Sign up for eblast and text alerts and share our updates on social media and platforms. Check out middle school jam and high school real talk meetings on third Sundays on Zoom. Join us and invite your friends to our Limitless Bible Study every Wednesday at 8 o'clock on Zoom. Check out Jam Services on Fourth Sunday on YouTube. Make sure to pay your tithes and offerings. If your birthday was in the month of December, please place the date of your birthday along with your name in the group me chat. Good morning. My name is Elisha Howard, and I'll be doing the scripture for you today. Isaiah 9, 6, and 7 says, For a child has been born for us, the gift of a son for us. He'll take over the running of the world. His name will be Amazing Counselor, Strong God, Eternal Father, Prince of Wholeness. His ruling authorities will grow, and there will be no limits to the wholeness he brings. He'll rule from the historic David throne over that promised kingdom. He'll put that kingdom on a firm footing and keep it going with fair dealing and right living, beginning now and lasting always. Hi, my name is Max, and please bow your heads and close your eyes. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for waking us up this morning, and thank you for keeping us safe through this year. Please keep us blessed throughout the rest of this year, and keep us safe and healthy. In Jesus' name, amen. What does Christmas mean to me? Christmas is a time for family traditions, delicious recipes that have been passed down through generations and meaningful Christmas tree ornaments. Christmas bonds us closer together. This special time of year makes us feel a sense of belonging and it creates memories that will last a lifetime. The spirit of Christmas is togetherness, thinking about others and forgiveness and remembering what's most important. But most of all, Christmas is the time that we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, the son of God who died on the cross for our sins. That's what Christmas means to me. What do you do when you've done all you can? Seems like it's never enough. Tell me, what do you say when friends turn away? When you give in your own, seems like you can't make it through. You just stand when there's none left to do. You just stand and watch the Lord see you through. Yes, after you've done. Oh, tell me, how do you handle the guilt of your past? Tell me, how do you deal with the shame? How can you smile while your heart has been broken and pain?
after you've gone through the hurts. After you've gone through the pain. After you've gone through the storm. After you've gone through the rain. Oh my. You've been wounded. You've been scarred. cry all through the night yes you do you look for someone to help you through yeah. yes, Lord. and you tried and you tried with all your mind you prayed you cried you prayed you cried prayed you cried you prayed
And the presents are nice, but the real gift is you. Happy birthday, Jesus. I'm so glad it's Christmas. Us. The carols and bells make the holiday swell. But it's all about you. Oh. 
Okay, so the question was, what does the birth of Jesus mean to you? And the birth of Jesus to me is the birth of our leader, God's son, the Messiah. Without him being born, we would be doomed because he's the reason we get to live because he saved us. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm so excited to be here today to share um, the true meaning of Christmas and the Christmas story with all of you. And before I begin, I want to thank Reverend Frazier for this opportunity to um, be with all of you today. And I look forward to spending this time with you. So I want to first start by reading the story, which can be found in Luke chapter two. And I will be reading from the New International Version. And so the text states, in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. When he went there to register with Mary, who pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today, in the town of David, a savior has been born. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to, to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spared the word concerning, they, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child and all who heard it were amazed what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were, um, which were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given to him before he was conceived. And so that is the complete story in Luke chapter two. And so like many people, Christmas time is my absolute favorite time of the year. And I think mainly because of the joy that is surrounding um, this season. But I think with that, there are also so many distractions. I mean, you have gifts and you have, you know, Christmas movies, spending time with your family. Like there's so many, things that can deviate your attention from really what we're celebrating. And so I myself have definitely fallen into that trap and gotten caught up um, celebrating all the other things and not really um, remembering or giving enough attention to the essence of what this time of year really means. And that's celebrating the birth of our savior. And I think something that is so unique about Jesus's birth, unlike many other things, um, is that he came into this world in the most humble way. And you, when you think of the birth of a king, I personally think about just a super flamboyant, over the top entry into this world. But our savior came into this world in a manger like in in the most humble way possible and so i think that also shows us a lot about what jesus was and who he is and the purpose that he brought into 
um, this world, which was to save all of mankind. And so I encourage you to read the Christmas story if you haven't already this, um, this holiday season. Read it with your family. I think that makes it even more special. Um, and just ponder over um, the beauty um, that, that God is and, and how um, he is in our lives. And so also share, share with your friends all that you have learned and, and the joy that this story is. I um, would encourage you also to read it through the gospels because each of them have a unique perspective on the story. And of course, um, the story, the essence of the story is the exact same, but each of them bring their own unique view um, on it. So definitely read it with your family and friends, um, share with everyone that you come in contact with the true meaning of Christmas. And I hope that you all have a beautiful holiday season. Um, enjoy, have a happy new year, and don't forget what we truly are celebrating, and that is the birth of our Savior. Thank you again for this opportunity, and I hope that to see all of you soon. Hey, good to see you. It is by God's grace that we're able to see each other, even though we aren't in each other's physical presence. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I extend to you now the invitation to let Jesus Christ into your life. We are in tough times worldwide and we can't make it without Jesus. So right where you are, I want you to think about something. If you had died yesterday, where would your soul be today? Where would your soul be today if you had died yesterday? If you can't say definitely with a surety that it would be with God the Father in heaven, then you need to really think about giving your life to Jesus Christ. He'll make a difference in your life. He will make it possible for you to do whatever you need to do. We won't have to fear the pandemic. We don't have to fear these tough times. We don't have to fear anything knowing that Jesus is Lord of our lives and we have eternal life with God our Father in heaven. We have access to the Holy Spirit to help us, to give us hope in a future that seems dismal, in a future that doesn't seem like it's going to be bright. But with Jesus Christ into your life, we can make it. So today, think about it. You see where that you can join the Brentwood Church there. We're here, Reverend Frazier, the youth group, the youth all over the church are here. I'm here, Reverend Thompson, and all of the Brentwood parents and workers, we love you, we believe in you. If there's anything that you need, you can let one of us know. But today, don't leave Jesus out of your life. Let him make the difference. He loves you. He wants you to be part of his family. And with all that being said, and Jesus in your life, I've got a feeling, young folk, I have a definite feeling that everything is going to be all right. Will you accept him? Just say, Jesus, come into my life. I can't make it without you. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, take over my life and make the difference for me. If you've said that prayer, and prayed that prayer. Get in touch with the Brentwood Church. Become part of the Brentwood family and jam and our youth church with Reverend Frazier as our leader and Pastor Ratliff as our shepherd. We would love to have you and Jesus would love to be your leader and Lord of your life. Think about it now. If you died yesterday, where would your soul be today? Accept Jesus Christ in your life and you'll be able to answer that question both now and forevermore. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer.